Well, good morning. Welcome to New Hope Community Church. My name is pa- Pastor Brian. Uh, just in case any of you don't know me, I think you all do though. But so uh, again, it's nice to be able to gather with family and friends and, and uh, just uh, be able to worship God on Sunday morning. And you know, we, we are in this time of year that um, we, we drum up a lot of excitement, but sometimes for some of us it feels like since we do it every year, it's become mundane. And so we're kind of faking some excitement about something that we feel like it's become mundane for us. And, and I want to just take an opportunity this morning to maybe pick this apart a little bit, look a little closer at, at this uh, event and see if we can see anything new with it. Uh, as an example, uh, this past week, my daughter Jordan just shattered my childhood because she shared something with me. Can you tell me, what is Humpty Dumpty? Me. <laughs> an egg. Why, why do we think that he's an egg? It never says that he's an egg. Where did we get this idea that Humpty Dumpty is an egg? Because of the drawings, but somebody had to think, well, let's go, let's make him an egg. But, but the nursery rhyme never says that Humpty Dumpty's an egg. Isn't that interesting? It like, it, it put me in depression for three days. So here's what I want to do this morning. I want to talk a little bit about um, um, also this idea. I want to, again, delve into some things and not take anything for granted. And let's look at it maybe with some fresh eyes. And also this idea of, the, of a concept drawing. Have you ever heard of a concept drawing? It's this idea where somebody sits down with a piece of paper and they scratch out an idea on paper and they use it for maybe architecture or in movies or uh, 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 different things. Just they do a quick sketch to give you an idea of what the finished product is. And we'll be looking at that as well this morning. So let's pray. Our dear Father, we come to you this morning and we, we, Lord, we thank you. I know that we come in here and um, we come in here every week and and life is just so busy. And it's, it's almost like sometimes we want to drive through church. We always want to just, you know, stop in, get me a little Jesus and then go on our way. You know, put it in a paper bag for me. I'll, I'll take it and, and, I'll, and I'll open it up when I have a chance. Lord, we want to we try to step away from that. And we want to stop and, and immerse ourselves in the truth of who you are. So Lord, I pray that you would touch our hearts this morning. Uh, I would pray that you would change our lives. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So in, in talking about the birth of Jesus... One of the things I want to point out is that, that Scripture lays some things out for us. And, and if you're interested this season in opening up your Bible and reading for yourself what it says, Matthew tells us a little bit. Matthew tells us that the angel Gabriel came and he visited Joseph. And when the angel Gabriel came, he, he told Joseph, Hey, listen, I know, I know your wife's pregnant and I know you didn't do it, but it's okay. It's all right, because the child is from God and you should stay with her and you should marry her. And, and so... The account in Matthew is very, very brief because then it says, okay, so Joseph stayed with her until she had the baby in the name of Jesus. And that's pretty much the whole account in, the, in, the, in Matthew. If you want to get a, a more detailed look at what happened, and we need to open up the book of Luke and read in Luke. Mark doesn't talk about it at all. John talks about it in some uh, very poetic terms, and he says that the light came into the darkness. But Luke lays out a lot of the details that we understand and know as the nativity. Luke talks about how the angel came and talked to to Zacharias and said, hey, you're going to have a son, and you're going to name him John. And then Zacharias uh, doesn't believe him, so he can't talk for a little while. And then uh, says that uh, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant with John the Baptist. And then how the angel visited Mary and told Mary she's going to have the Son of God. And so Mary goes to visit uh, uh, Elizabeth. And and then she she says this beautiful thing we know is the Magnificat. 
and, 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 and it's the, the immaculate conception, we read about that. That's a biblical term, immaculate conception. Well, not, well, it didn't come straight out of the Bible, but it came, the idea came out of the Bible. It didn't come out of football for some of you. The immaculate reception, right? It was. That came from the scriptures about Jesus becoming pregnant with with Jesus, or Mary becoming pregnant with Jesus. And then uh, it tells us that that they were called to to Bethlehem for a census, and so Joseph and Mary traveled to Bethlehem, and there was no room for the end, and so they they went into a stable to have the baby, and that Jesus was laid in a manger. Now, I want to pause there for a second because. Like me, I'm going to assume that most of you, when you hear the word manger, you think of a baby crib. We become so accustomed to the idea that a manger is what Jesus laid in, that if we think of manger, we automatically picture baby laying in the manger. But it's a feeding trough. It's a nasty, disgusting, slobber-covered feeding trough. And so she lays baby Jesus in this in this manger. This is the true nativity that the Bible tells us about. Now, I want to pick apart a little bit of what we see as the nativity. Because scripture says absolutely nothing about Santa Claus and his reindeer. So we can remove them from the, from the nativity scene. Scripture says nothing about a little drummer boy coming to visit Although I love that song. But it's not scriptural. Little drummer boy doesn't come to play his drums for Jesus. Scripture doesn't tell us anything about uh, the wise men being there when he was born. They do come into the scene, but it's later on in his life. Probably when he's closer to one or two years old. So we can take the wise men. Oh, Christmas trees too. Christmas trees are not in the Bible. We can take those out. And here's a little bit of a shocker to a lot of you because I know that on our, our nativity scenes uh, we often have the angel hovering above the, Jesus. Scripture doesn't tell us anything about an angel being present at the birth of Jesus. And so this is the nativity that the Bible actually paints for us. But there were visitors. There were visitors that night. And I want to I want to read about them. This is in Luke uh, chapter 2, begins in verse 8. And it says, In the same region where Jesus was born, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. There will be a sign for you, and you will find a baby wrapped lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. And when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem then. And see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. So when we look at this biblical account, I know you go, I know, I know the shepherds. They're in my nativity. I, have the, I, I got the shepherds. I know they're there. But let's not skip over this too quickly because we mentioned this idea earlier of a concept drawing. And shepherds are a really fascinating concept drawing. Because when you look into Scripture, the very first profession that's ever mentioned in Scripture is a shepherd. And that was Abel, the son of Adam and Eve. Abel was a shepherd. He was the son. And he was a righteous son. And he was the son who was killed because he had a a good relationship with God. We also go on and we look that uh, a shepherd is something that throughout history is seen as something that is absolutely necessary. It's a necessary uh, profession. Although it's kind of lonely. You know, do it, but just do it over there. You know, it, it's kind of for the lowly and, and for the poor and the lower class. And so they said, uh, we get it. It's a noble profession. Just don't want to see it. 
We see later on that the, the, the best king that Israel ever had, aside from Christ, King David, he was a shepherd boy. And he was called straight from being a shepherd boy to being the king of Israel. And we see that all of this is a concept drawing of the, of the real or the final product of Jesus Christ. Because we can see that in, in Ch uh, John chapter 10, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now, shepherds, to be a shepherd, it required total devotion to your sheep. Because sheep are pretty stupid animals. Okay? They're, they're filthy, they're dirty. The, the shepherd had to be devoted to them to make sure that they eat. He had to take them to earth. Okay, here's food. Eat it. He had to take them to water. Here's water. Drink it. He had to shelter them. He had to watch over them day and night because shepherd had this tendency to kind of wander off. And in case you haven't drawn the connection yet, sheep are a nice concept drawing of you and I. The book of Isaiah points this out in Isaiah chapter 53. Beautiful chapter. It says, All of us like sheep have gone astray. Each one of us has turned his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. So on, on this busy night in Bethlehem, God went to these, these lower class citizens and he said, you know, you guys were a concept drawing of what I've just made real. C come on, I want you all to see it. I, I want you to come see the Savior born, the true shepherd. And so a single angel appears. And the first thing the angel says is, don't be afraid. Now, I want to point out that if this showed up to me, I'm pretty sure the first thing he's going to say doesn't need to be, don't be afraid. <laughs> okay, we have this idea that this is an angel. We have this idea that, that fairy godmothers are, are angels. And, and they don't need to show up and say, don't be afraid. Every time in Scripture an angel shows up, the first thing they say is, don't be afraid, because the people are about to wet themselves when they see an angel. <laughs> the angel probably looked more like this, but I would suggest that this doesn't even begin to touch it. So this angel shows up, and this is what the Bible says. He says... For today in the city of David, talking to the shepherds, he shows up to the shepherds. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with an angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, God, our glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Now, I have seen different artists interpret this scene. I have seen where they have taken this and, and they have... This is one of the, the ones that, that is very popular. This scene where the angels show up to the shepherds. And it's almost as if, you know, they're all lined up like a chorus. And, and you, you, you picture the clouds parting like a curtain. And, they're all, and you hear a few of them clear their voice. <coughs> And then you have one of the angels step up to the podium with that little stick thing, you know, that they use and tap, tap, tap. And then they all sing this beautiful melodic rendition of glory to God. That's not how I see it. That's not, that, that's not to me, what, what's going on in this scene. Because when, when I read through this, I, I'm picturing all these angels behind this veil between this world and the heavenly world. All, they're all just excited and bustling and they're, they're bumping elbows and they're, they're jostling with one another and finally one of them breaks through this veil. And when he breaks through, I would imagine it's something along the lines of this. Hey! <laughs> this is probably why the, skepper, the shepherds were scared to death. Because you got an angel jumping out. And I'm, I'm sure the shepherds, when they're telling this story later, no, we weren't scared. We just said, uh, you know, don't be afraid. So you got this shepherd, this angel that's just so excited about this event. I mean, this is, a, this is the event 
Christ is entering the world. From the foundation of the world, this moment has been, been, been orchestrated. All of the Old Testament has been laid out as this, this concept drawing of this child. And the angel shows up and goes, Hey, listen, listen. Come on, look. There's a baby. Okay, a baby. No, no, a baby. It's the Savior. It's the Messiah. It's the Lord. This baby. Come and look at it. And, and about this time, the angel can barely get it out, and all these other angels just break through the scene. I, I picture it like, like at a football game, and the football team bursting through the tape, you know, running out, and they're all running around, and you're doing chest bumps, you know, and high fives, and yeah! And, and they're just excited. And I kind of picture Satan over on the other side, like in a football game, and they're going, ooh, 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 ooh! Because <laughs> they know what this means. <sighs> I'm in a shape. And this excitement of this moment, and I just don't see angels standing there going, yes, glory to God. They're jumping, and they're excited, and they're shouting, glory to God. Glory to God. God has come. This is the moment. This is the time. This is what all of creation has been waiting for. This baby. A beautiful moment. A moment, and they're, they're, they're very clear with this. This is a moment of great joy. This is good news. This is great joy. That word great, that's where we get the word mega. This is mega joy. Excitement. I want to look. They say, the angels, they go to this upside down manger. <laughs> Bear with me. Come on. Use your imagination here. And the angels say there's great joy over this little thing. Great joy. All of creation. This one moment over this little thing. And that's the, the bundle that I would love to give to you this, this Christmas. Joy. Great joy. The joy that comes with, with Jesus Christ. A genuine joy over little things. And I want to tell you that these angels weren't, they weren't misinformed. They weren't ignorant. They weren't forgetful. They knew that this moment had set the clock ticking. They knew that this baby, this baby was going to grow up and be tortured and have nails pierce its flesh and, and die at the hands of an angry mob on a bloodstained cross. They knew that. But they still said, oh, the joy, this moment, right now, look at the joy of this. They weren't putting it aside or forgetting about it. They said, right now, it's about the beauty of this, this little thing here. This is one of the things that, that we struggle with. This is one of the things that we, we get clouded by. We say, oh, but you don't understand the pain that I'm, I'm dealing with. You don't understand all the problems that I have. You don't understand that next week I've got this stuff that's hanging over me. Or, or I know that, that I'm waiting on the doctor's report. Or I'm waiting on, on my relationship. Or I'm waiting on, on this, this 
horrible thing. Or maybe I'm not waiting on it. Maybe in the middle of it. But the angel showed up and said, Find the joy. Find the joy in Jesus Christ and you will find the joy in the little things. And you know why they were able to rejoice over this? It's not because this baby grew up and, and was pierced by nails and hung on a cross and died. It's because that baby resurrected. Because they knew the last page. You and I, we know the last page. We know how it ends. Not to deny what you're going through. We're not forgetting it. We're not ignoring it. But we can find the joy that's in Jesus Christ. And one of the things that stood out to me as we read through this passage, I'm going to close with this. Because reading through this account, the NIV reads this way. It says, Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He's the Messiah, the Lord. It says, to you. Here's an angel talking to the shepherds, and he says, Hey, a baby's been born to you. A few blocks down the road, I've got a nine and a half month pregnant daughter. Not quite nine and a half months, but she thinks, she feels like it. If I were to go to her, and I were to go, hey, you know what? We're both doing this, baby. I'm with you on this. I understand your pain. I'm going through this with you. I, I know what it all feels like. I don't think she would receive that very well. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Mary's laying in a stable somewhere. A bunch of animals laying around. In the midst of this labor and delivery. And the angel's shown up to shepherds going, hey, this baby's born to you. That struck me as weird. It was odd. And then it's beautiful. See, that's the great joy of Christmas. That Jesus Christ is born to you. He's born to you. He came just for you. He is your Jesus, if you'll accept him. to be your Savior. God collaborated with man and, and He's your Messiah. The angels partied because He's your Lord. This, this small thing is no small thing. Find joy in Him and you will find joy in everything. I, I know the clock's ticking. Find joy in Him. He will show you the joy in little things. I know difficult times are ahead. Find joy in Him. He will show you the joy in in the midst of the trials. And I, and I know things are hard right now. Find joy in Him because He's born to you. Let's pray. Dear Father in Heaven, we thank You so much for this grace that you've showered on us, this beauty, the Messiah, the Savior, this, this baby, your Son. Lord, we, we say all these words and, and they become mundane and, we, and we, we sometimes gloss over them, but help us to focus on the enormity of what it is that we're talking about. God became man for us, to us. 
Lord, shatter everything else that, that muddles that and plant that in our hearts and let it grow. In Jesus' name, amen.